episode of Dolce Vita, participate in one of the most anticipated annual events at the race course. Experience sophisticated neoclassic Italian dining. Explore the true meaning of living on vacation. Catch up with the hottest NFT art trend. And try a workout that combines cardio, strength training, and self-defense skills. Wow, Telfer, you're looking very gentleman today. Ferran, I don't usually give compliments in general, but look at you, you look amazing today. That's very nice of you. You know what, every year there's a few high fashion events that we have to go to, and we have to look our tip-top condition to show our best impression. Horse racing is one of them. Attending a horse race is a wide and encompassing experience as it is customary for attendees to dress for the event and play a part in the track environment. That's right, modest length skirts and heels are recommended for the ladies. As for the gentlemen, a nice wrist watch, a nice suit, and having a bow tie right here is all you need. Gentlemen's Bow Tie Race Day is an iconic event in Hong Kong that celebrates fashion etiquette. On this special day, gentlemen attendees are invited to dress up in their bow ties, while ladies are recommended to accessorize their gorgeous outfits with bow-related elements. May I ask, what's the connection between bow ties, watches, and horse racing? Uh, actually, the core connections between watches, bow ties, and horse racing are talking about good timing and high quality. Why high quality? Because we select all the good watches from all over the world, uh, which is similar as uh, we select all the good horses to participate in horse racing with bow tie theme. For the good timing, actually we can't uh, select the horses and the bow tie and the watches in too late or too early. We need to match with the good season. Can you tell us what's so special about today's event? Um, actually, we invited uh, many uh, young and talented celebrities and KOLs to attend our event today. So uh, we can show there is a gentleman in every man the thief. And uh, also, we specially invited two uh, talented designers to specially create a, uh, eight pieces of costume. We showed bold and bow tie elements. And then we also firstly took place uh, the catwalk show under the winning arch. So uh, this is a very special for this year. Besides wearing a bow tie, choosing the right timepiece to match your outfit is another way to dress up for the prestigious race day event. A nice wristwatch not only elevates your style, but also symbolizes the intrinsic connection between time and racing. Hi Ashley, Hi. can you tell us about your style today and why do you go with this style? So um, I've opted with um, an all-white look, so um, it's very simple, it's elegant. Um, I love the silhouette of the dress because it's more um, playful, I guess. And I think with something so simple, it really um, you know, draws attention to, you know, your jewelry, your watches, and also the hat. So I've opted for something sparkly to go with a very simple look. I went for this look because the theme of today's event is bow ties. So I, I feel like, um, you know, girls can really own this, um, you know, motif as well. And um, I think it looks really feminine and youthful, girly in a way. Um, so yeah, I, I think um, it's something we should really own and adopt it. Hi Yvette, have you been to a horse race like today before? Yes, a few times actually. Today is a special event because every gentleman is in full tie. And horse racing is elegant, horses are majestic, and um, you know I'm very happy to be wearing this outfit and to, to match all the elegance out there. And in your opinion, what's the appropriate attire for a gentleman that can match with your gorgeous appearance today? Well, today is bow tie, right? So I would say bow tie like this. Like mine, right? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I feel, you know, very much the elegance and, and the class that's all about horse racing. Hi, Bruce and Chris. Nice Hi. to have you today. Can you tell us what a bow tie symbolizes? Uh, to me, a bow tie symbolizes elegance, tradition, and gentle manliness. Uh, wearing one just shows how you're willing to be different than others to, you know, stand out from the crowd. And how about Chris? What do you think wearing a bow tie does to an event? I always love to dress up and attend a wonderful event like this with wonderful people and 
I'm really having a lot of fun here. No one could have asked for a better day than singer Jay Fung today as he went out dressed to the nines by opting for a three-piece suit with a black bow tie. This smart decision has led him to receive the Best Bow Tie Attire Award. Let's have a chat with Jay and see what he has to say. Hello, Jay. Hi. Congratulations so on much. winning the Best Dress Award. How Thank are you, you feeling? I'm very happy. I mean, this is like my first time coming to the Gentleman's Bow Tie Race Day. And it's such a nice event that you actually get to dress up really nice and everyone's very classy. And I feel like the bow tie, it's a very gentleman-like thing and I rarely ever get to come out and dress up. So this is, uh, yeah, it's a really great, that's a very celebrated event and I'm happy to be here. What would you say is your fashion style in three words? In three words, um, I would say simple. Uh, at the same time, comfortable. Uh, proper yet stylish. Well, I hope it's stylish. <laughs> it is stylish. And do you have any fashion tips that you can share with us with the audience? Um, definitely not the one to be giving fashion tips. But if I have to, <laughs> I would probably say I think self-confidence. Uh, I think that's very important. It's not exactly what you wear, it's how you wear. And so I think, uh, yeah, confidence is the most important thing. Very well said. Although the majority of the races do not require an official dress code, it is, however, very important to know what to wear on a horse racing day. I think this is what sets apart horse racing from other spectator sports. Well, since we're both dressed up, what do you think if we head closer to the finish line and enjoy the race together? All right, let's do it. This way? Simultaneously overseeing the big picture and every tiny detail. To maintain high standards in food quality, the cooperation between the management as chefs in most modern kitchens, as no good meal is truly complete without some delicious After the break, experience the true suburban tranquil living. Check out what's trending on NFT.
and try out moves that get your heart pumping. Living in a peaceful, beautiful, yet convenient neighborhood that lets you wake up in the great symphony of the dawn chorus every morning is probably the dream of many. With the developed transport network and infrastructure, realizing a dream may not be as hard as you think. I think it's safe to say that everybody misses traveling. I mean, who doesn't want to get away from the city for some fresh air? You can relax, take the edge off. But honestly, I don't even remember what it feels like to be on a plane. That's right. You can't just fly anywhere you want, whenever you want. But you can choose to live somewhere where it feels like you're always on vacation. Are you itching to travel to a forest resort? Why not live in one? The epic greenery allows you to detach from the hustle and bustle of city life. This cozy and comfortable lounge is designed to create a homey ambiance for people to relax. It's a perfect spot for anyone who wants to indulge in the tranquil neighborhood. When we think of Hong Kong, we think of a financial and commercial city. But nowadays, with a vibrant art scene and a number of large-scale international art shows, Hong Kong has become one of the world's largest arts and cultural hubs. Hong Kong is the center of uh, art for Asia. Uh, it is also uh, the house of uh, many major auction houses, as well as many major galleries around the world. Uh, as you see in Hong Kong, uh, what are the trends of art? Uh, we actually lead it uh, not just for Asia, but also for around the world. Lately, you see a lot of contemporary works uh, being exhibited in Hong Kong. Uh, but I want to go back a little bit to talk about how you know, art over time has uh, translated into different mediums. Even though traditional Chinese art has always been uh, about ink and paper, for traditional Western mediums, it will be all on canvas. And if you look at contemporary works, uh, we're looking at graffiti on walls, we look at gunpowder, we look at sculptures, many different kinds of uh, representation of art. But if we look at what is very trendy right now, um, it is about the digital medium. It is about putting things from the physical world into the digital space. And this is very attractive and brings about something that everyone has been talking about over every single meal uh, without fail, and it's about the NFTs. NFTs, short for non-fungible token, is essentially uh, a technology powered by the blockchain. If you think of NFTs, uh, while it is synonymous with art for most people, it is actually the enabling medium by which digital assets can have value because of ownership, transferability, as well as authentication standards. So NFT art is basically digital artists as well as traditional artists using digital media as a form, uh, as a medium for representing their art and using NFT blockchain technology to authenticate and secure its ownership as well as transferability on the blockchain. Showcasing NFT art is actually getting a glimpse of our future. By introducing NFT, we're actually looking forward into 20, 30 years from now. What will people like? What will people think? How about a world where digital asset is of equal value to a physical equivalent or even worth even more because we spend so much time in the digital world. And I think by exploring NFTs, all of us in this era, as well as past generations, were able to see what the future holds. That is why NFT has such a great impact, uh, not just in the art world, but also all around uh, you know, the hottest uh, topic, uh, I think, for the whole year in 2021. Prior to the existence of cryptocurrency, it's impossible to really own something completely digital. However, the rise of NFT made online art collecting possible. The new form of digital art also opens up new opportunities for artists from all around the world. So 
what do you consider when choosing which artists to collaborate with? Whenever we're choosing artists, we'll definitely look into their CVs and portfolios. Um, second of all, we'll see if the artist's work um, is very recognizable. For example, when we get to a preview or to an auction, whenever we see pumpkins, whenever we see dotted lines, whenever we see infinity nets, we'll eventually uh, imagine that that's going to be the work created by Yayu Kusama. So we want to actually have works that is recognizable. So whenever uh, people come in, in and seeing a show, we want them to go home and to get the fact that, oh, I actually remember that these works are created by Andreas. Why did you choose to work with Andreas Ivan? So you may have noticed within the NFT world, there are actually tons of artists coming out every single day. So it's actually very hard for us to stream with the very high quality artists. So we discover Andres Ivan and we discovered that his work has been mentioned uh, on a lot of top accounts and outlets. So eventually we got him on board. So can you tell me more about the artworks in this exhibition? Sure. So um, Smoochies is originally originated uh, from the connection between his mom and Andreas. As an expat living in China, um, he separated with his mom thousands of miles of Part. So um, in 2016, he realized that his mom got a very serious depression. So he created this character, Smoochie, as a consolation towards his mom. So his mom is actually the inspiration of Smoochies as well, because when he was young, whenever he was down and whenever he was sad, his mom would kiss him on his cheek. So all these Smoochies is actually a way to show love and care towards the world as well. That's actually very meaningful. So which is your favorite piece? Um, I actually have two smoochies, which are my favorite pieces. So one of it is called Miracle. So Miracle is actually generated from his mom. So it's actually the artist's favorite as well. Because um, Andre's mother is also an artist her, uh, herself. And she's the one who actually led Andre to the path of art. So Miracle is, a, is actually a derivative from his mother's artwork. So um, another smoochie is called Lethal. So this is the most related to the NFT world. Because you can see in his eyes, they were actually minted within the Ethereum blockchain. And you can see his future touristic appearance is actually very memorable to the audiences as well. There are a lot of ways to appreciate and support artists. We usually like to go to galleries or museums, and with the explosion of NFTs in the recent years, we can see that the possibilities for development of arts and culture are really endless. I've lived 30 odd years, however, there's one thing that I've never done, which is to have a physical confrontation with someone. And there are two very good reasons for that. For one, I am a coward. For two, I can't fight. However, today, I can change one of those things because I am here to try my hand at Krav Maga. Hey Derek. Hey, hi. So I'm ready to learn, but what is Krav Maga? Krav Maga is a self-defense system from Israel and it's military based, but we are teaching normal people how to defend themselves on the street. So other than self-defense, why do people come and learn Krav Maga usually? Mainly it's because um, some people, especially in Hong Kong, they are sending their children here and then learn some self-defense before they go because they worry about their children. Secondly, there are some women they have been attacked before, so they want to really learn something to protect themselves in the future. And of course, for some uh, male, they of course want to learn something to protect their families or their friends. As I watched Derek's demonstration, the explosiveness and speed of Krav Maga really made an impression on me, and I'm actually quite excited to get started. So I guess there's nothing else to do except to try out myself. There we go. How do I do this? Okay, let's kick. Okay. Krav Maga is actually a little bit different from other martial arts or other fitness training because we are dealing with street attacks. So we cannot ask the attacker to wait for us to warm up on the street. So that's why at the beginning, we still have to ask them to punch, kick, do some like light punching, light kicking at the backs and then run around the dojo to warm up. Although on the street we cannot stretch, we cannot ask the attacker to wait for us to stretch before we get the attack. Still, because of training, after the warm up, we still will 
teach them uh, some stretching before we start the uh, intensive training of the technique so as to prevent injury. Basically, Krav Maga always kick the groin. That's the most basic and most important move in Krav Maga. And also we are hitting the weak points. So we are saying that we are using the hard part of our body to hit the soft part of the attackers so that we can defend ourselves fast and run away. Krav Maga actually is not only a self-defense system that can teach you how to defend yourself but also will train you to be fitter and also they will, they will react a lot faster to what is happening on the streets because usually people are like looking, standing, without doing anything when, when things happen, we, we've seen a lot of clips like that. They will be a lot more confident to deal with any kind of attack on the streets. The thing about Krav Maga is that it is very efficient. And even though it may look simple, but the movement, and especially the timing of the movement, requires a lot of practice in order for them to be effective. However, if you're the kind of person who fancies a challenge, wants to learn something practical, and get a good workout in, then this is definitely for you. That's all the time we have for this week's episode. If you've enjoyed what we've introduced and want to find out more, simply check out our program website. Do you want to get more out of your life? If your answer to this question is yes, then join us again in the coming weeks to discover the essence of a sweet life. We will take you to experience Hong Kong's dynamic dining scene, stay on top of the latest happenings in town, and see the world through the eyes of the people from different backgrounds. Be sure to tune in again next time.